Welcome to the Interesting Podcast episode number 185. This episode is with the fantastic Jim Peary. Not only does he have one of the smoothest voices ever, but he's also super fun to hang out with. In this episode, we talk about his love of dance, learning multiple languages as a kid, performing Shakespeare with Val Kilmer, doing set construction before booking an episode of Beverly Hills 90210, working on an episode of Friends. Yeah, you heard that right, Friends. Memorizing three pages of Italian for his Red Dead Redemption 2 audition, how much he enjoys performance capture, and so much more. Jim is a delightful human being, and I'm so excited for you all to get to know him. So, without further ado, please enjoy this episode of The Interesting Podcast, number 185, with Jim Peary. Theme song time! class it was a series of classes literally all weekend long uh what we're talking about is uh dance salsa yeah. and bachata for me bachata. um yeah and it's uh these amazing dances that um have kind of become a, a passion of mine yeah. um and yeah so literally spent the whole weekend where you you just at a festival where you're taking classes all day long you just go from class to class to class to class um wow. learning you know different things from different styles to maybe one that focuses on you know spins or something like that and just um you meet some great people then there's social dancing at night and then the the place is also the, like they'll put on a a show uh before the social dancing opens up wow. so it's just a whole weekend of dance with a really great group of people and how uh, cool is that it's really cool i, I mean it's uh, yeah, it's something that I I started uh, more just to hopefully meet someone, and it ended up where I fell in love with the art form. Hey, there like, you go. Oh my gosh, this is so good. And so yeah, that's uh, that's kind of how it went for me. So yeah. Did you pick it up easy, or was it something you had to like really work at? Um, yes and yes. Yeah. Um, it was it was a little bit of both. Definitely a okay. little bit of both, okay. where I have to work at it, but some things you know uh, come easy, but uh, you know uh, definitely. I, I've been lucky enough that I've been physical all my life in mm -hmm. a lot of different things. And so, you know, just being kind of athletic overall helps for sure. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Do you, so you have one right and one left foot is what you're telling me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I hear I, that helps. I definitely confuse him, but anyway. <laughs> yeah. But I, and like, I think it's so helpful um, in our profession to have passions, uh, to have different things that are outside of acting. Um, mm -hmm for your life experience. When I first started off, I, I was not that way. I was, uh, singularly focused, shall we say, sure. um, you know, I just wanted to get better. And so mm -hmm. everything I was taking classes all the time and, you know, in theater companies and, um, just doing whatever I could to get basically any job, uh, acting wise, just to get experience under the belt, um, sure. you know, and so, uh, after doing that for a while, um, I found out that it, I, it was nice. I always have interests in other things, and and mm -hmm. I found out that those interests actually fed the acting. Yeah, um, you makes know, you a person. Yeah, it, it absolutely. It rounds you out as a human being. Um, and because for a while I was not, I was, I was a little bit lopsided. Oh, sure, no, still, still yeah. lopsided. <laughs> <laughs> the best people are. <laughs> exactly, and we are unique in that way, and that's yes. it's that thing that that makes us unique. You know mm -hmm. that includes our passions and stuff like that that um uh definitely informs our acting and and makes you know makes us uh kind of indispensable in terms of when we attack a role mm -hmm. um you're going to offer some unique perspective that no one else can and it's not about the quality of your voice it's not about um you know uh, any other aspect like that but it's really what you can bring to it that's that's unique about you that you don't you don't have to think about it. It just is. Yeah. Yeah. Did that take a while to come to? Like, cause there's, I've learned that early oh, yeah. on you try and like do the right way, but then you're like, Oh no, I just got to do, I just oh, got to do my way and hope dude, it works. 
<laughs> you and me both. You and me yeah. both. That's exactly how I approached it. It's yeah. like, what would be the right thing? And like, yep. I'm, you know, in the very beginning, it was like, what is the right way to say this? I remember yeah. thinking about that and, you know, uh -huh. having one way and, yeah. uh, um, and learning. Okay. And here's a perfect example of why it's good to have other passions. Because the same thing in dance applies to uh, in acting, Ooh. where um, there's like something that's choreographed. Mm -hmm. But then you find a way to do it your way or where in the midst of it, like all of a sudden the music changes or your oh. partner does something and you respond to that and you have the freedom uh. to do that. And so it's the same thing with acting where there isn't a right way. And say you're doing a scene with someone and mm -hmm. and, uh, and they just do something that you just respond to and then it's it's on it's you're going yeah. back and forth and it's it's the best you know it, uh, uh where it's it's kind of like rather than a piece that you've just studied and have to do this way um mm -hmm. it's like uh, like jazz where you're improvising and ah. that you know, where there's a give and take uh, a call and response or whatever and and you're kind of instinctively doing it and that's what i aim for Sure. I definitely don't do it all the time. <laughs> I, I certainly, you know, fall on uh, uh, bad habits and whatnot occasionally. And, uh, you know, it's funny. You can sometimes that director in your head that's in the back is like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, you can hear yourself give a line reading. It's like, oh, oh, no, no. You know, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, get back in the game, <laughs> back right. on target, back on target. You know, yeah. <laughs> um, Why did I say it like that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's that's the yeah. tricky part is letting go of those moments and then and then getting back in the game, getting back Ooh. in the present. How long did it take you to be able to do that? Uh, uh, like I said, I, I really am still doing that, but yeah. I definitely I know that's what I uh, that, that that is a goal. Um, so I'm definitely better at it now. But um, hmm, how long did it take? It was a gradual process. Yeah. And it, it took me years. I, I'm a slow learner. Yeah, um, same. You know, uh, I. I I really was. Yeah. How, yeah. how was it for you then? I make it uh, same. I, I also tell people beforehand, I'm like, yeah, I, this is going to take me a little bit. Like, I'll get it. Like in, <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> in martial arts, when I'm going through a cotton sensor, he's like, put your feet here. I was like, I, I'll get it. I promise I will. Just, uh -huh. Right now it's making my body do what my brain knows. It's like, I know what the next one is, but then right. the physicality of it, like I imagine with dance, there are steps that you need to know. Yeah. It's like, phew. I know, I know I have to spin this way, but my body's like, what if I didn't? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. And, and we're, we're, we're riding that wonderful tightrope of, mm -hmm. uh, knowing where you're supposed to go, but then there's that impulse to try something new. Yeah. And sometimes you might discover something that's not on the page and mm -hmm. that's wonderful. Um, it is. you know, a different way of saying something, uh, it just brings a different, you know, a quality of humor to something that was very serious or, you know, yeah, uh, and it makes it interesting and and not stereotypical, you know. Agreed. It's that magic, yeah. like you said. It's that give and take yeah. in a scene when you're like, oh, oh, yep. I didn't see that coming. Got it. That's that's, that's right. real. That's that stuff. Whatever that is. <laughs> that is. Yeah. With the, we're doing that, holding up the the Italian yes, hand gesture. The thing, you know <laughs> the thing, which makes sense for you because you're the go-to Italian guy. <laughs> that's <laughs> fortunately I am. Yes. Do you you speak Italian? <laughs> I do. Yes, was it your first or second language? It was my second language, but I lived there when I was a kid. Um, oh, what? What part? Yeah, uh, a little bit Rome, but mostly Sardinia. Um, yeah. Have you been back? Oh, Sardinia. Si, si. Uh, yes, I have. Uh, I have. I have. You know, Italians. They're as prolific as rabbits. So I'm yeah. fortunate <laughs> enough to have relatives all over. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Although I need to go back. It's been a while. But uh, yeah, it's it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah, I love it there. My father was from Italy, so. Oh, cool. You know, yeah uh growing up in the house we we spoke uh, a mixture of languages actually um, what yeah you just he, leave he that was... on the table jim okay well he was he was a <laughs> linguist um and he, wow. he taught several several different languages he taught primarily latin and french um but he also taught italian and spanish so what? um yeah he he was amazing he was a true linguist and so at home we spoke this um, melange, this just mixture of, uh, of languages where, you know, he'd throw in phrases from even sometimes Latin or, um, French and English. Cause once I, I started studying French after I came back from Italy, mm -hmm. um, and being a romance language, it really helped me. Although I've forgotten so much. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, and so for food in the bathroom. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> those are, those are the main things, but, um, uh anyway so it it 
it helped develop me, uh, uh, you know, develop my ear and, um, you know, for, for roles that, uh, I end up doing, it's, it's, uh, really expanded the, the repertoire of characters I can play. I bet. What's the level of fluency you're at? So English, Italian, uh, <laughs> Italian, <laughs> Italian, I'm basically fluent. Um, uh, English, there's a nasty rumor that I'm fluent in it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and French, I am Passable. no longer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> French, I can understand a lot, uh, uh, you know, um, but to, uh, actually come up with it is definitely, uh, I'm, I don't know, probably like a kindergarten level. Um, okay. Okay. People understand kindergartners. I'll exactly. give it to you. <laughs> exactly. Um, although fortunately I, I think my, my ear, uh, it sounds like I know more than I do when I talk. That's mm. the main thing. Yeah. That's the sweet spot when you understand yeah. slightly more than you can speak. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. I feel you. It, well, not just understand more than I speak. I sound like I know more than I can Ooh, than I do. Better. You don't it have until, a touristy twang until they to it. respond. You know. Yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. And then you go and you're like ah. Oh là là, mon Dieu, j'ai oublié presque tout. Hein? Qu'est-ce que je peux faire? You know, whatever. Yeah, boom. boom. I believed it. <laughs> yeah well yeah and then see if you'll notice i would totally fade it off at the end because i like you know didn't know what to say you gotta keep that confidence jim all the way through fake it till you make it <laughs> right right exactly <laughs> je m'appelle jim you know je m'appelle, got oui. see Ça, c'est vrai. i've got the perfect uh not french accent to make yours ah. look even better i'm here for uh, no 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 <laughs> <laughs> that's nuts and your dad was fluent in all those to teach them yeah he was he was and so uh yeah he was the one who really uh studied i have a more instinctual approach uh, wow but yeah it, it ended up helping me where did the interest in entertainment start then i started pretty young yeah honestly like i, I think in second grade we cool. did the, uh, the school play and of course um, I, I got a laugh and i was i was hooked yeah um it's the know. ultimate drug <laughs> right and then and then i think seen a couple of movies uh, Star Wars and of course Can't beat and it. uh and Three Musketeers. Um yep, I see <laughs> in the background he's pointing to uh, all these wonderful posters and uh mm-hmm. paraphernalia in the back. I love Relatable. It. Yeah, exactly. And so uh what's funny is I, I think both of them ended up being uh you know had some kind of sword fighting in them. Uh-huh. Which also also drew me. Um and yeah, those seeing those movies was like, oh my gosh, I want to like you can do that. Yeah. Um, you know, I wanted to be able to do the same. That's cool. So it was movies. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, you know, it was school plays and movies mm-hmm. and, and getting some, some good notices in school plays also helped. Sure. Um, so I, I do happen to know that you went to school for engineering. That's right. That's which is right. not acting. No, it that's is a not. right brain to left brain. What's, it is. what's going on here? What's going, what's going on there? What happened? Um, what happened is a strict Italian father who's like, you ah. cannot, uh, you know, you're not going to pursue this crazy vagabond life of acting. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and it, it worked for like almost, uh, I don't know, it, it didn't work. Like within a few days, <laughs> I was like, oh, I was miserable. What have I, I done? <laughs> yeah, actually, the, I, 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 w- I, I really actually got depressed. I bet um, you're yeah. an artist and um, because I wanted to act mm-hmm. and uh, I went from being an amazing student, uh, you know, straight A's to all of a sudden um, by the end of second semester. And like I had all these scholarships, I was placed on academic probation um, because I almost, you know, it was like I got all these D's and yeah. I was I, I it was just not what I wanted to do. And I didn't know how to reconcile that. Sure. Uh, ended up going to therapy that summer and figuring out a plan is like, okay, I want to act. I'll switch from engineering to architecture because at least that's uh, design and it's a bit sure. more artistic. But all my electives are going to be in uh, acting Smart. and I'm going to audition for all the plays. And I did. Um, and then ended up even being in the Colorado Shakespeare Festival. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, and then after I'm done with that, I'm going to move out to California and, and, uh, uh, pursue acting full time. And once I made that shift, everything, boom, I was back on the Dean's list again and life was great, but it, it took me a, a year to kind of wrestle with it, doing what I thought I should do versus what I wanted to do. 
Of course. Um, you know, and, and you know, uh, it, it wasn't just my father, he, he, although he definitely uh, uh, put pressure on as a you know traditional Italian father. But um, it was also what I thought I should have done because mm -hmm. I just didn't really think you could pursue acting as a career, of course. you know, for a bit because it was just such a strange uh, thing growing up in, in, you know, Colorado and Italy. Uh, uh, and a little bit New York, um, where it just it, it just didn't seem like it was a, a rational choice mm -hmm. or even unrealistic. A, a, actually, a possible choice. Ooh, it was like so far off in the thing. So one of the gifts of that, though, I think, is once I did get here, and and even actually in school, it it gave me the motivation to work my ass off. Yeah, because um, like I said, I, I I learned slowly, so I know that I just got to put in more work. And it, mm -hmm. it helped me to to kind of have that attitude of, of just putting as much work in as you can to get better. And it's like, okay, I'm behind the ball. I got to get going. And, uh, uh, you know, I just got to put more work in, more time. And I think that helped me, uh, especially in like the first, you know, several years. What was Shakespeare like? Because it's a different language. And when you're like, yeah. I want to get into acting. And they're like, here's a different English. Exactly. Enjoy. Well, so, so. There's this wonderful uh, Shakespeare festival uh, associated with the University of Colorado. And right. so it's literally right there. And oh my God, it has the most amazing theater, um, yeah. very rip on theater that's outdoors, uh, an amphitheater with all this Ooh. beautiful, the red rocks of, of Colorado right there. And you have the mountains in the background. Uh, there's like, it, it literally you're on the campus, which is a stunning campus. And yet um, there's, trees and uh, uh you, you can like in midsummer night's dream you can look up and you'll see the moon right there oh. and it's in the mountains oh. and everything and it's just gorgeous um and some very talented people as well um and i had this one experience there that i, I it, it it was kind of life-changing uh for me career-wise where so you're in rep you have like mm -hmm. three plays that you have to do and um and it's, it's just a lot of work so and like my work. my first year i was there you know i was like you know the spear carrier number two and of course. Know, i had all these small roles i literally mm -hmm. had like i think peas blossom uh <laughs> in the summer and i was i was like the bosun in in uh the tempest anyway classic um, a tree cl yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> um but i understudied some great roles i understudied oberon um Ooh. and uh, uh Macduff Ooh. and stuff and anyway I remember in Caliban and I wanted to, it, it's funny. Some people in the, um, uh, in the company did not take it seriously. Of course. Um, and I really did one because selfishly I wanted to go on. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, mm. I definitely was <laughs> ambitious, but, um, more than that, it was like, if something happens to them, I want to be able to go on and, and not just do it, but I want to be able to thrive. Sure. I want, I want to be able to kick ass. Get in there. Exactly. And so the way it happens is you you do the show and then out like a week after it opens, um, you have one understudy rehearsal and, oh. and that's it for each of the plays, um, which you're lucky in some some companies, they don't even do that. But anyway, yeah. so we opened up one of the shows. Everyone, you know, congratulates each other, leaves the theater to go somewhere you know, to celebrate. And I was like, you know what? I got this understudy thing I got to do. And so I'm just going to work on it. And I, I started working on it at this beautiful theater. And there were a couple other people that were kind of doing the same thing. But then after a while, they ended up leaving. And I, I was just working, keeping adjusting things. Okay, I'll work on this monologue here. And then, oh, yeah, what's the blocking for this scene here? And going back and forth and kind of just like, okay, then I go from here to here and tying it together and really getting it cemented in and uh, or at least, you know, uh, uh, starting that process. Right. And I just kept working and working. And all of a sudden, I look up. And it's getting light out and the birds are chirping. Ooh. And I just had this moment where it was just, it, I was one of it. It was one of the happiest moments of my life. I love that. And I realized I had made like, this is what I was meant to do. Yeah. This, I was so happy. I just been working. I didn't even know that the time had gone by. I thought I would, I would there for like an hour or two. Ooh, and I'd been that's working. Good. I'd been working on it all night and just lost in it and loving every second of it. Magic. It was, it was magic. And, and it was like, okay, this is, this is the right thing. And, um, after that, 
uh, after that summer, literally like a, a couple days after the season ended, I, uh, uh, as they say, loaded up the truck and moved to Beverly. So, dude, you know, yeah, I came out to Hollywood. Came out to I Park, love that. Park Hollywood, yeah. I call that the like uh, when the spirits aligned. Because yeah. artists, like you're saying, when you're not doing what you're meant to do, you can feel it. It's a disconnect. But when you are there, oh, it's yeah, oh. yeah. It was a struggle for me to to figure that out because I I thought I would be. You're absolutely right. I I thought, um, okay, I'll do this respectable job, make money, and you do community theater and be happy. I guess mm -hmm. you know it was was. Yep. where I was. I thought I could do that. I thought I could fit the round peg in the square hole. And yeah. it was like, no, there's no way in hell. <laughs> <laughs> Just doesn't work. I, I really, honestly, like, I was, uh, yeah, and one of my, my best friends uh, from that time, uh, actually from high school is, as well, is an engineer. And oh, great. Uh, we're, we're still great friends to this day. And um, I, I, don't, I look at the difference between how our minds work and it's like, I don't even know how I got admitted into the engineering program. Like I yeah. <laughs> clearly, I barely, barely had enough. Um, I, I don't know, like the mathematical and, and you know, the physics skills, like I, I had enough to get in, but I remember like second semester differential equations, uh, just <laughs> looking around and like, I don't understand any of this and just kind of raising my hand. It's like, um, excuse me, I, I really just want to act, you know, yeah. <laughs> was how I felt. I want to head over to the other department, you know. Smart. So, yeah, that was, wow, that was a long time ago. That was uh, kind of how it all uh, started uh, fomenting or, you know, catalyzing. I love it. Did yeah. you do a show with Val Kilmer? Yes, I did. Yes, do I, I know did. Good. Wow, you, I, was, I'm, I gotta say, Brian, <laughs> damn, I am impressed with your uh We're just getting uh, started, my friend. Uh, yeah, okay, <laughs> well, this is exciting. I, I'm it's here like, what, for you, pal. <laughs> what's, he gonna, what's he gonna bring up? I love it, um, in a good way, in a good way. Uh, yeah, that was, well, actually it was the second uh, season I did with the Colorado Shakespeare Festival. Wow. He played Hamlet and he was the best damn Hamlet I've ever seen. I bet. He was so Val in Kilmer. the moment, it's Val Kilmer. And he was he was doing it because he wanted to kind of work it up to then ultimately take it to uh, uh, New York and do it on mm -hmm. Broadway, which he had, he ended up doing. Um, and he was it was real interesting uh, uh, watching him do it, and um, it was hard to connect with him because he was already such a huge star. Oh sure, you know, and so um, you know, definitely had some scenes with him, but more than anything, it was just great watching him and seeing how he interacted yeah. uh, or, or, or how in the moment he was, how real it was for him, uh, especially with, with classical theater, with Shakespeare. Sure. People, you know, tend to put on things and yeah. they become what I call actrons, <laughs> yeah. where everything <laughs> is perfectly elocuted, but like there's nothing going on underneath. Sure. And he was the opposite. I'm like, yes. That's, that's what I how it's do. done yeah so it was it was also uh wonderful just to be exposed to that and see yep yep okay that's kind of what i want to do i love that because you yeah. get i found you do get better with working with people that are really oh, good it's like, absolutely you, you can't help it but like oh i've up my game because they're doing their thing and you walk right. away it's a it's a weird filling each other's cup kind of thing yeah 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 exactly right it's like you know uh to use the the tennis analogy if if you're you know playing against someone who's a really good player you have to up your game otherwise you're yeah. gonna get killed and um but and it just happens like they sing the ball to you they just sing it and you gotta hit back fast and so um uh yeah uh definitely it, it helps raise your game for sure I also, um, I love that we started talking about dancing because, you know, there are some triple threats out there. Yes. Just a fact, there are some people. <laughs> but rarely do I find that actors get the chance to showcase all three of them. It's just opportunity. And I also happen to know um, where are you gonna go early with out the gate, somebody got to do all three of those things while also teaching bicycle safety. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! Have I seen it? Yes, I have, Jim. Oh, I'm so yes, so I sorry have. for you. <laughs> that is well. Now I, I just look so back much. and laugh. You did. Yes, yes. You must ride safe and love it. How uh, did that happen? <laughs> okay, so after that that uh, uh, first summer of uh, Shakespeare Festival, drove mm -hmm. out to Hollywood uh, and uh, 
like literally looked in the trades and started auditioning. And within really? a couple of weeks, um, one of the things was, you know, uh, uh, it was a bike safety camp video. And mm -hmm. um, it, it was something that uh, Dimetap, there was, it was some cold medicine. I, oh. I don't know, for whatever reason, they decided to do a PSA. I think I'm sure it was a tax break for them or something. Sure. But anyway, uh, they did this thing. And so they... <laughs> was so lame um but he it was like moves. Uh, moves yeah the, <laughs> uh, very yes I don't, uh, um yeah i had i don't know what to say about that uh i, I dug fun. it i'm not gonna I, uh, lie it looked like yeah. a lot of fun it was it was fun and uh that was one of the first jobs i got in la when i got here that's yeah. amazing yeah, yeah I, so i do have one question that i've been wondering since i've seen it Okay. Were you also the clown trying to nope, distract the I was kid? I was not the clown. That was some okay. other guy. It was okay. a great but I remember he was like a, a sound or a tech guy. Um oh. and and I remember all of a sudden like he didn't he he, he just spoke normally, but when he, he did the the bit, he was like, Hey kids. And it was like, <laughs> Oh my god, it was hysterical. We laughed so hard. And I'm glad <laughs> I'm glad they kept it in. It was like, where did they find that guy? Um uh, yeah. yeah, no. That was that was not me. That was not me. Okay. I wish it were me because he was awesome. Right. I've been I've been yeah. wondering because he's not in the credits. And I was like, wait a second. Is something is somebody pulling something over on me? Yeah, he <laughs> might be in the credits. Like, I think he was with the sound department. Interesting. Yeah. OK. Yeah. OK. <laughs> I also like that you said you moved from Colorado to Beverly Hills because you literally landed on Beverly Hills 90210. Ah, look at you. Wow. You're digging deep dude, in the dude. You you're... came into my house. All right. wow. I love it. I love it. I How was that. that? It's like such an established thing. It's a soap opera, yeah. which I've heard is just crazy turnarounds. Yeah. Um, it was, uh, they, I'm trying to think I was actually, uh, so I was, I was trying to get jobs and I'd worked in construction, um, oh, out in Colorado. That's different. And, um, well, I wanted to, when I was studying uh, architecture, I wanted to learn you know, ah. kind of the, the basics and I uh, discovered that I love working with my hands and working outdoors. Cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, but uh, when I came to LA, one of the things uh, uh, that I was able to do was get a, a job through a friend of mine um, working, uh, doing set construction. And anyway, oh. I was, I was working there and, you know, half the people there are actors anyway. And one of the yep. guys who was also in set construction was like, Hey, I'm, I'm working on Beverly Hills 90210. They're looking for a guy. I think you'd be perfect for, um, okay. They were having a hard time finding. He was, he was the steroid dealer <laughs> <laughs> on the track team. Perfect. Um, they saw your bicycle safety like, video. Exactly. They saw those shorts. They go definitely <laughs> right. on something. Exactly. <laughs> um, and I think we even had like a, cut off sweatshirt or something like that Perfect. anyway it was ridiculous but you know it's Aaron Spelling and um, yeah uh so I went in and auditioned and uh they uh were kind enough to cast me and I had so much fun um yeah. and in fact okay I, I everything for some reason is tying back to the Colorado Shakespeare Festival I'm here the buddy uh uh who got me the job doing set construction this is this amazing actor um you might know of him Michael Cudlitz um yeah yeah from best Walking mustache Dead, in the from, business yeah exactly <laughs> he's he's freaking awesome and uh um anyway we were both in that Colorado Shakespeare Festival together Dude. um in fact he understudied Macbeth I understudied Macduff and we had the sword fight Dude. Uh, and then whatnot small it was world. awesome small world anyway wow. um he uh uh, also ended up being in that same episode. Um, and so I was in that one, uh, I was the ringleader, uh, and he was, he was one of the uh, evil cohorts of mine as we Beautiful. brought pressure to bear on, on the rest of the guys in the track team. Yeah. That's Dude, wild. How so. cool is that? What are the odds? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very strange. Very, uh, 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 you know, everyone kind of six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Yeah. I'm starting a new one. Five degrees from Jim Perry. We'll there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. Was it stressful because it's such an established show and TV moves fast? It, yeah, it was. And it was, well, it was that combination of stressful and exciting. Yeah. Um, and, you know, but fortunately, well, I was ready for it. I mean, I, uh, I'm sure like, you know, I 
<laughs> I would I would cringe if I saw it now in terms of the acting <laughs> level. But you I know, you. It, it, exactly. We we all have to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and that was like I think my first big you know TV show. It, it was it was my yeah. first. I'd, I'd done little small things, but that was like the first uh, guest star. And um, uh, it ended up. I don't know if that in particular led to some other stuff, but uh, then I uh, definitely went on from there. But um, yeah, I I enjoyed the process and was ready uh, for it. Like, yeah. uh, you know, I just, I used to be, you know, when I would get something, I would just work and work and work on it. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, so that, that I think helped me be ready for that fast pace. Um, cause I mean, like nowadays doing uh, mocap, it's the same thing. Like you actually have to be, know it backwards and forwards as you know, I'm sure, sure. um, backwards and forwards and be ready to rock and roll, you know, like we said, to, to do the dance, if, if mm -hmm. it's going to go a different way. Um, and it's, it's why, you know, uh, performance capture is actually probably my, f is definitely my favorite medium now. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Because uh, one, you have the freedom to try different ways of doing things. It's super collaborative. And also like with video games, the writing has gotten so good that, yeah. you know, it's just, it's full on just acting your heart out. And also um, uh, you get to do these wonderful things that you've always wanted to, that are fantastical. You yeah. get to be like, you know, you could be a musketeer or uh, on, on an ice planet, you know, dealing with mm -hmm. aliens or in a post-apocalyptic world dealing with, you know, zombies while riding motorcycles. Like how uh -huh. cool is that? And so um, it's the stuff that when you're, you're a young kid looking at Star Wars, you're like, I want to be able to do that. And like, I am so fortunate to be able to do that stuff now yeah you know, with with some phenomenally talented people and uh i'm a i'm a very lucky man i love it uh, but luck is preparation meets opportunity right this is right. how it works you put it those <laughs> long nights waking up to this seeing the sunrise while working yeah. i'm not surprised at all that this is where you landed yeah. yeah now was it more stressful to be on a soap or doing a scene with angela lansbury oh wow you went i know I know. Uh, I I did do like a few days on soaps here and there, mm -hmm. and that actually is way more uh, stressful. bona fide. Yeah, because like literally in Seattle kind of things. Or Young and the Restless. Yeah, somebody's not sleeping. Some somebody's <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> somebody's restless. Somebody, yeah. it's, uh, young and the Restless Leg Syndrome. Um, <laughs> yeah. no, um, but the the uh, uh, the fact that those things you have like one take. And oh, then they're moving on what? like, so the pressure is cranked and literally like some, some actors will start swearing, like if they don't like how the take is going, because that's the only way they'll stop and start over again is oh. if, if they do that. So that's a <laughs> trick. If you're ever on a soap that, you know, no, and, and you're not happy with it, because especially otherwise they're just like one take moving on. That is Ooh. hardcore pressure. Whereas Dear God. the Beverly Hills was, was not that way. It was okay. Like you got more than one. Good. Yeah, good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yikes. But uh, you were asking uh, how Angela many did Lansbury. you get with Murder She Wrote? Mm -hmm. uh, Angela Lansbury, uh, legend. She was awesome, but uh, she was producing the show as well as acting in it. So she oh. was just like, I, and she was running it all and doing it with aplomb. She was just like as nice as could be to everyone, um, but she didn't have the time to, to memorize stuff. So she put up uh placards Classic. everywhere yeah of uh, you know they would write her lines on these big postcards and are not uh you know the posters and just put them up everywhere and so at one point we were doing a scene and you know i was there to read her stuff my, my lines off camera for her eye line and she mm -hmm. she was like you know i'm sorry i just can't do it i need to be able to look at the thing and in order for her technique to work it was best sure. if i just didn't engage with her and it was it was, that was kind of a cool lesson in that learning you can do something that's very technical mm -hmm. and yet when you see it, it it actually comes off where you know it looks uh it looks great and yeah there can, there can be this moment that's going on and that like helps with like i say performance capture or whatever where you, you have all these technical considerations with like the helmets and the cameras mm -hmm. right there in your face and there's nothing there this is another reason why i like it is you have to use your imagination yeah and so you can imagine all those fantastical things as settings and whatnot 
and um uh but you you can have those technical considerations and still have this very realistic grounded performance yeah so i was like ah, oh, yeah i was seeing her do that it was like mm, okay interesting okay. put that in my little uh toolkit you know i love learn, that learn from everyone i love that when you learn like as you go on with acting there is it, it's so technical it's like mm -hmm. there is an emotional side and there was a way of things but yeah like when i learned the term business i was like what like yeah just something <laughs> to do and it like just picking up something oh. adds so much i'm like oh Okay. Oh my gosh. And and what what was it that uh, set that off for you that, that made it's, that I read a book. I read a book uh -huh. called yeah. The Love Practical it. Handbook for the Actor. Huh. It's, Who wrote it? it? It's Melissa Bruder, Lee Michael Cohn, Madeline Olneck, Nathaniel Pollock, Robert Provito, and Scott Ziegler. Awesome. It's very short, but it's very like, here are things that we learned. And I guess uh, William H. Macy helped them put it together. Oh, nice. Like, what, yeah. is, what is this? And I remember reading that and then doing a scene as like a mechanic and just having a towel to wipe your hands yeah. while you're talking. It's so simple, but right. adds so much realism yeah. to the scene. Yeah. You never know. It grounds you. Yeah. It Isn't grounds you. It, it It is weird and it's wonderful. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I love doing that as well. Um, I have anytime, anytime I can have some kind of business that grounds me. Uh huh. Um, I definitely uh -huh. try and, and put it in there. I'm with you. And I like that you mentioned you're leveling up. So you got like Beverly Hills 90210. You got Murder, <laughs> She Wrote. And then what's the biggest TV show of all time? Friends. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that was. How? Uh, how? how did you compose okay. yourself for an audition? <laughs> um, yeah, and it was huge at the time, too. Uh, but, you know, I was I was auditioning a lot back then. And uh, you just, you know, agent tells you where to show up. And mm -hmm. you're like, OK. And what's funny is that script, it was written in English. There were oh. no, yeah, they said, and they, they had the people, we wanted them, they wanted the characters to speak in gibberish, all ah, in gibberish. So that's what we were speaking. Different language. A different language, exactly. <laughs> and so, but it had the lines in English. And so um, we ended up, like, it was literally, you go there, you audition, let's say, okay, um, come back in a couple hours for the callback. And it was wow, like, okay. Fast. Oh, wait, it gets even faster. And oh, then no. so so then you come back and there's like a group of like, I don't know, six or eight of us and they start mixing and matching. And mm. with some of the other people uh, we were doing uh, like they matched me with one one other guy and we did more of a, a romance language based thing that sure. sounded kind of French and Italian. And then um, then they matched me with this other guy and he did more of a Slavic type oh. thing and it was like oh and i i adapted mine to his and it was kind of like that thing of you know a player who's talented does something and yeah. you respond to it and yes, so and. then we ended exactly mm -hmm. exactly and we started improvising with that and they loved it and they said great um you guys are the we're gonna pick you you got the job head over to wardrobe and then oh. uh <laughs> And by the what? way, you're going to be on the set uh, as soon as you get done with wardrobe, head on the set and we'll, you'll be part of the rehearsal. And yeah. literally it was like, bam, 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 bam. Oh. And uh, we, I think it was like we had, you know, uh, one day of rehearsal without camera, then two days with, and then we shot it uh, at the end of that day. Good It was God. super fast. Yeah. We thought soaps went fast. You went yeah. from the audition room on, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yikes. And then and the the last uh in the the outro the the where they're closing the credits. Uh-huh. With the literally guitar. They, it was right before they they were about to film it was like um do you play guitar by any chance? Uh -huh. and I was like not really. It's like I know uh and they go we have the rights to these three songs. Do you any one of these <laughs> you think you can do? And one of them I I, I developed a passion for back in my days was American Pie. And uh -huh. I was like, "Oh my god, I can." <laughs> and so <laughs> And so they they gave me that and uh, we just, it was kind of an improvised uh, thing where like at one point I say like everybody, but you know, kind of in the mm -hmm. Slavic language. And um, uh, yeah, that was that was improvised. I was very happy because I was able to make Lisa Kudrow laugh. Yeah, you um, did. And so it was it was so much fun, like literally huge amount of pressure. And that one, you know, like, yeah, but uh, like, rising up to the challenge and and doing your best and i felt very good about that i was very happy with how that turned out as you should my family uh, loves friends so when i when uh, i when walt was like yeah talk to jim i was like jim jim where do i know jim from and then when i was what i remembered the episode because it's the one where ross and rachel take a break there yeah talked about forever. <laughs> we're on a break <laughs> it's like that and then you're the guy 
And with the translator, it's like one of the best things ever. It's yeah, it's so yeah. Good. The translator, he was awesome. It's he a was great, great, great part. I can't believe that was so fast. Like, yeah, it was ooh. super fast. Yeah, exactly. For a show like that, you'd think it would be lots of development yeah. and stuff, but no, it was it was fast. It was like a five Man. day, you know, from table read to shooting at night. But most Sheesh. most sitcoms are that way. Sure. Yeah. That's nuts. Friends. Yeah. Friends, Jim. You worked on Friends. Friends. I know. I <laughs> like know. it's I peak. <laughs> Man. It's good it stuff. was fun. It was awesome. It was awesome. Oh, thank you very much. Wow. So how long from like Friends did you start getting into video games? Because I know it was around this time. Um, it was it was maybe a couple years after that. Mm -hmm. Um okay. and then uh I had a uh well, no, actually it was several years after that. Um the First big one, I I was lucky enough to jump into the deep end with L.A. Noir. Ooh, um, yes, you do a lot was... of yelling. <laughs> yeah, you spend yes. a lot of time yelling in your roles. Now that I'm thinking about it, I do, <laughs> I do, I do. I play a lot of bad guys and do a lot of yelling, um, <laughs> but uh, you know, just in different accents. Um, that happened because my agent uh, he just decided he it was with a theatrical company that decided he decided to start his own or to start a voiceover department within the agency cool. and asked if I wanted to be a part of it. I was like, hell yeah. yeah. And um, started sending me out. I started getting a couple of things, but fortunately they were, they were auditioning for LA Noir, but they said they didn't want the normal voiceover people uh, or just the normal voiceover people. They wanted actors because it was important within the story to be able to tell whether someone was lying or not. Right. So performance. They, they, they wanted someone who visually, you know, would be able to um, pull their own weight as well. And honestly, though, most voiceover actors can do that as well. It's, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't differentiate right. when I do voiceover. I, I don't, I don't do anything differently than I do when mm -hmm. I do regular acting for the camera. So yeah, um, I, I hate that there's a distinction because agreed. And some of the, honestly, the, some of the voice actors are some of the greatest actors of all Absol time. Oh my God. You're absolutely right. People have no idea. I've not, no idea. So hard. <laughs> and and honestly, you know, one of the unsung heroes of the industry are loopers. Yes. I like I've worked mm -hmm. with some of the most talented people who know languages, whose improv skills are amazing actors. And they can do it like in the bat of an eye and give you several different versions in different mm -hmm. uh, voices. You know, they can voice match. It's like, holy crap. These guys are some of the most talented people on the planet. And yet. Every single one of them is grounded. Um, they're a pleasure to work with. And yeah. I literally, um, I, I think they are the unsung heroes uh, uh, of the industry, certainly of the voiceover uh, community. Um, and they're, I have nothing but respect for those people. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Was, was L.A. Noir mocap or was it voiceover? So yeah, it was it was performance capture because we, wow. we uh, early days. Then, early days, yeah, we had to sit in this you know sphere and full of bright lights and literally if one hair was out of place it would screw up the thing some somehow the way no. the the lasers read you and so they they spent like an hour getting the hair on your head oh, just no. everything so there wasn't <laughs> one single fly away it was just pasted down Ooh, um for, for, the, for the facial yeah exactly calibration and um uh, that's, I remember that about it, but there were so many talented people on that shoot as well. And they, they, they had like a bunch of guys from Mad Men, um, and some other actors that were just amazing. And, uh, we, you know, I, I fell into that one and I think, um, having that on my resume opened doors for mm. other games and sure. I, was, I was fortunate in that way. Yeah. But it was, it was an awesome experience and, uh, uh, I still, I, I look back very fondly on that one. Good, as you should. How cool was Lost Planet 3? Oh! Huge role. You get to be the boss of the game. I mean, yeah. come on. Yeah. Come that, on. That's, it is so much fun. Th those are by far the most interesting roles. Sure. And like that one, that one didn't have to yell. Um, yeah, yeah. You got a break. <laughs> that one, it was a much, it was a much more subtle uh, yeah. performance and, and realistic. And that I have to attribute to the wonderful writers. Um Matt and Richard, they're, they're amazing. Uh, yeah, you, mm -hmm. you might know them from, you know, uh, some other smaller known things like God of War. Yeah, if you've heard you know, of it. Things like if you've heard of it, but, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, uh, they, you know, seriously, uh, their writing was phenomenal. And so just 
just the words, the way they, they yeah. structured the motivations for the people. Um, it, it came from a real place and it made it so much easier to do. Um, and so, uh, yeah, uh, I, I am grateful for that. And that's, um, that was one, yeah, where, where I actually knew them when I first came out to LA, one of the things I did was, um, uh, a little bit of, uh, uh, fight choreography. Um, and dude, I, I would worked, uh, at, at Van Nuys high school. <laughs> Perfect. Um, uh, through, uh, there was a Shakespeare company out here, uh, the Will Gear theater company that, um, uh, I did, uh, some choreography for, and they, they recommended me, um, for the pr a production. I think it was a midsummer or Rashomon. Uh, at first it was midsummer. Then later on it was Rashomon. Beautiful. And, um, uh, I ended up, uh, meeting these guys and back when they were in high school and instructing them uh you know in the sword play and dude and and all of a sudden like i don't know this audition just happened to come across you know in the email and i submitted something they called me in and it was like oh my god matt richard and yeah. um and uh i was fortunate enough that they loved my work and i got to play the final boss in the game yeah so it was great it's it pretty was, good yeah yeah that's you know. so cool. You know, it's today's yeah. PA's tomorrow's producer. Like, yeah, that's how yeah, it works. Exactly. And now they're, they're just Titans. Um, yeah. And writing super, about them. Uh, eh. There's right. <laughs> 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 Nicely done. Nicely done. <laughs> um, they're like, uh, of those people, I, I definitely having worked in, in, you know, TV and, and video games, I, I feel like the people on the voiceover side are, are just more grounded. Yeah, I found um, the same. You know, and they certainly are that way. They're like insanely talented, but wow, you're just down to earth guys and uh, uh, lovely, lovely people. So, That's yeah. amazing. I I love obviously a lot of your roles, but I gotta say, in the top five, it's gotta be King Regis. Mm. Those just something <sighs> about it. I don't know if it's the sound of your voice. It's oh, honestly, it's you. all of it. But just the walk tall, my son. Yeah. Reach, oh, thank uh, you. That's a career line right there. Yeah. That's that's one you want to do. Like looking back on your life, this scene right here is yeah. Tops. Beautiful is, work. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And that's where uh it's originally it's it's technically challenging I because bet. it's originally recorded in Japanese. Right. And you have to match the timing of the Japanese oh. uh voiceover. So it's a very uh, unnatural position to be in. And, but like, if you, you know, can make the challenge work and ground it, then it's like, oh, fuck yeah. Yeah, um, you get so, it. So, yeah, it's awesome. And uh, that, you know, uh, working with a great director on that, Keith Farley, he was, he was awesome. Love that well. guy. Previous yeah. guest, mutual friend. Ah, there you go. Love Keith. There you go. Yeah, he's so good. Um, and he helped, uh, with that as well. And also it was, uh, you know, this is the thing about video games is it's su especially, uh, uh, motion capture, performance capture. It's such a collaborative effort. Yeah. And, uh, the look for that was, uh, another, uh, awesome actor, John Campling, um, Ooh, yeah. back in the UK, he, uh, we never met, um, but he recorded, uh, you know, he did all the visuals for that. He did all the motion capture for that. Oh, cool. And then, uh, you know, as they piece and puzzle it together, I ended up doing the voice for it. Um, and so, yeah, it was, uh, that was a, a, a fun, both challenge. And then when you read the script and you're like, you get that, that, you know, parting of the ways and, and that kind of unspoken, uh, tension, but, you know, wishing well for the sun, but, you know, uh, mm -hmm. still having where there's an issue as, as they're about to move on. It's just, ah, oh, it was the so depth. well. So the depth of it. Yeah. It was, it was in the writing and, uh, um, you know, it was wonderful to, to kind of excavate that, to mine it for what it was worth. And, um, yeah, uh, I loved, loved being associated with that. And, and, uh, it was definitely a favorite project of mine. How much freedom do you have? Because it, it there's an actor that did it first in Japanese, mm -hmm. and you have to stay true to the character and true to the scene that's already been done. And it's and it's also you have the visual 
Yeah, that's already been done. So you don't have you don't you don't have hardly any freedom. You're like you're within these tight walls. Yeah, that you have to then all of a sudden come up with something that hopefully will resonate. And so it's super challenging. You still killed it. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, thanks, man. I like I I love I love challenges like that. Yeah. Like okay, so first huge challenge that I had after 90210. There was this awesome series called Reasonable Doubts, yes, um, which had Marley Matlin, who mm-hmm. uh, just uh, produced and is in uh, Coda, just came out, and you know Incredible. happened to win an Academy Award. Yeah. No but other than that, <laughs> anyway, so she's this amazing actress, uh, uh, and it was uh, uh, her, to play her love interest, who yeah. was an Israeli spy, <sighs> um, so it, it, it needed an Israeli accent and uh who had to do sign language had to sign with her yeah um and uh so i had to i had to learn sign language and uh, an israeli accent and i had to do it super quickly um now i was fortunate with the the uh the sign language in that i was with a uh children's shakespeare company where we attempted to do a production uh, a couple productions uh in shakespeare where we would also sign oh um and Deep end. yeah yeah and it was it, it it ended up giving me enough basic skills so that when this opportunity came up uh the um the tv show then i was able to to do it and uh you know uh, i had uh there were there were some great emotional scenes and but th- that layering on of this accent and like I, I had to learn Israeli accent so I I didn't know and Ooh. there I ended up interviewing a couple of journalists that were Israeli there was a, cool. a, a an Israeli newspaper out here and I interviewed um, uh, this one girl and then also the editor this guy who uh, was probably the, the guy that i modeled it most after mm-hmm. um and met with a couple of coaches um literally two coaches because it was it was a tricky one and then uh uh the sign language i i hired a coach for the sign Smart language man. as Smart. well because i and i just i worked my ass off and and like i remember I had like maybe 24 hours or something to prepare the oh. first first audition oh. and I and I I was able to get the call back okay um, okay and, victory in itself and then fortunately there was a weekend uh in between when I I, I did my first audition and the callback happened ah. I was like oh thank god and so like I spent that whole weekend just like talking you know getting coaching um setting up all this stuff interviewing people um I I, I even hired uh there's a company, I don't know if it's still around, Berlitz, where you Great can name. hire translators, but they they promise the translators are from the country of origin. So cool. they really know the language. So I didn't call it up for the translating. I called him up for his accent and had him read the lines. I've and, done that. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and so that was actually a, a third. I, I, if I do an accent, I try and get at least three people to uh, that have the accent to triangulate it. Oh, um, that's cool. Smart. Just, yeah, because uh, everyone's different, and I, also I try and get more males um, mm-hmm. because they, for some reason, male, uh, you know, guys don't seem to be able to lose their accent as well as females. Yeah, <laughs> um, and there, there's just a different, uh, a different way that maybe the mind works. I don't know, but uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, I try, I try and get guys because it's sometimes a little different from uh, the way uh, women interpret uh, or are able to adapt their their accent. Um, Makes sense. Yeah. So anyway did that and was lucky enough to get hired and but it was like so challenging i loved the challenge of having to do sign language and a, a oh, an accent so on top of acting and make it real and working she had actually already won an academy award uh for children of a lesser god so Ooh. it's like oh i'm i'm playing <laughs> you're with in like now <laughs> the rock stars yeah exactly you're 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 going up against the best or playing with the best and uh, yeah and it's like she was amazing couldn't have been nicer and more talented uh and and uh it was just a wonderful experience that was awesome i love it see that makes sense you're leveling up you're working with these people (laughs) and then you talked about video games having incredible writing these days one of the greatest games of all time red dead redemption 2 yes come on dude oh my god so that one even though 
uh, knowing how it came out, interestingly enough, the audition for that was yeah. all Italian. There was not oh. one word of English. They what? had me, and and because they're hiding everything, right. it was literally three full pages um, oh. of uh, me as like a union leader addressing uh, guys at the at the union meeting, and and it was all. Tutto in italiano, proprio. It was all oh. in Italian, and so I I had to have this all memorized and ready to to go, and so I learned it, did it, and you know they they were like awesome, you, you know you got the job. And then they uh, it took forever because you know the video games just it takes years. Oh, yeah, it was like five finally, years. Yeah, oh. exactly. And about and I, literally, and finally like a year and a half after I booked the gig. Um, they're like, okay, we're ready to, to have you. They flew me out and I, I get the script and literally there's just a few words in Italian, but it was, <laughs> it was, it was so interesting. Um, uh, and then in that one, actually, we wanted to, to do more dialect. Um, uh, got it. And so exactly. Uh, uh, so just for the, the vibe. Um, but it was, uh, Everyone there was was great. I, I ended up hanging a lot uh, out a lot in the evenings with uh, Ben Davis. Who great is so powerhouse. Good. It's powerhouse. Mm -hmm. No shit. Just as a personality For, and as an actor across the board, <laughs> phenomenal. And so yeah, we we'd hang out in the uh, in the um, uh, hotel bar or like literally at. We you know share like a each get like a glass of bourbon, and, you know, talk about the day a little bit, and then I had to head back. It was like super concentrated for me. They oh. only had me for a week. I think, you know, like they were trying to save money. So sure. <laughs> all of my scenes were compacted into one week. So, wow. And literally I was like running all this. There's so much work that we shot that ended up not making it. I remember there was one scene I was so proud of and I really wish it had, it had gone into where I'm addressing the town and all this. And oh. it was, it went so well. And the director was amazing. He was very happy with it. I was happy with it, but it ended up not making the finished product. I mean, Damn. which is great because otherwise it'd just be, you know, a hundred hours of gameplay. Sure. Um, <laughs> like I get it, but also out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I get it, but out. Yeah, that's well said. <laughs> and, um, but literally it was like, so I'd end up shooting all day, have a drink with Ben in the bar at night, go back to my room and just study, study, study for the next day. Cause I had to be you yeah. know, ready to, to, run things the next day it was you know the way it was it was um I, I couldn't just sit on my laurels for for that thing so it was like busy 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 and then all of a sudden the week was done i was like okay wow. back to la and i had to rush back to la i think i had some other gig or no actually i think my my daughter i had uh something i had to do with her so it's a good um, reason yeah exactly <laughs> it was the, the best of reasons um but yeah it was it was super concentrated i remember just like barely having time to to kind of relax and just have that one drink and then yeah. <laughs> um head back to the room and, and start working some more and you know stay into the up into the night again and ready to Ooh. go the next day but uh, honestly i'm happy doing that yeah uh, i do it's I, that I, creative I, brain you gotta be yeah you gotta be doing stuff right it's when i'm not working that that uh i definitely do not like ditto uh, i do not handle do. free time well yeah yeah what are we running from jim <laughs> right <laughs> Um, I'm yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the uh, motorcycle zombies because again, uh -huh. I mean, dude, <laughs> you're just killing it with these roles, back and back and back. I'm very fortunate. Dude, Last of Us meets Sons of Anarchy, and you lost an arm. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that was. Right -handed? Uh, um, I am right-handed. Oh no, I'm right-handed. Yeah, exactly. So, um, Ooh. yeah, that was amazing. So that yeah. is where I met Walt. Uh, oh, makes sense. Yeah, he was he was helping out reading. He was helping Sony out reading for that. And um, I remember literally that's how we met is I come in, I'm reading for Boozer. And when you're reading the scene with a great actor, it's like you feel it. And yeah. like we've talked about this entire you know, this entire podcast. And um, literally, he says one line. I'm like, yes, like you just oh, we yeah. can we can, you know, rock and roll here. And that's what we did. And he was amazing. And that's, and literally afterwards, I was like, man, you're freaking awesome. Um, and from that, and then of course, you know, he ended up uh, helping out in the game as well and, and doing some, you know, several roles and uh, helping out other ways. But um, we just hit it off and, you know, I've been good friends ever since. So uh, that was so much fun. 
And that one took almost six years. Really? Yep. From when I auditioned to Woo. when it finally, finally came out, it was almost six years. Good yeah. Lord. I think part of it was we were also finding the right tone. Sure. Um, it was all really uh, sprung from the mind of John. Uh, he, uh, and, and, you know, trying a few different ways and, uh, but it was, it, it was always just such a, a roller coaster ride and like literally, you know, a huge fan of walking dead uh -huh. and all of a sudden I'm able to, you know, be in a similar world and, and doing that. And it was just, um, I, every day I, I couldn't have been happier working with Sam. Oh, one Whitworth. of the greatest. So good. Yeah. So freaking talented. Again, down to earth, cool. And uh, yeah, it was just, it was a wonderful experience all around. Whew. When did they tell you you were going to lose your arm? Um, it was uh, once we actually started shooting the scenes. Okay, uh, that's nice of them. Yeah, it was a little heads up. <laughs> it was, but it was, and then, and literally for years, um, you know, the way those things work for people that don't know is you uh you shoot like a couple days and then it might be a month or two before you come back in and shoot another couple days um because mm -hmm. it, it takes time for you know uh the the army of animators and everything to kind of bring things up to speed and uh play around with it and futz it and make it real and then um okay we're ready for another couple days and then you know might be one to three months before you come back in again sure um and uh so the hardest part is kind of keeping things uh, is the continuity. Um, oh yeah. You know, making sure it's like, especially if you're working on other projects, it's like, wait, who am I today? Right. What, what, what character is this? And um, yeah, so it's definitely a, a challenge, but it's so much fun. And uh, every time it was um, exciting and you just can't believe that you're, you're you, uh, you get a play uh, in a world like that. You know, because yeah. again, that's when you're a kid, that's the kind of stuff you envision yourself doing. And, yeah. Uh, here you are doing it. And you're and doing it. Well to do it. And yeah, it's it's an awesome thing. Did you have any tips for no shear about how to work? one -armed? <laughs> <laughs> No, are you kidding? No shear is so freaking good. Oh, legend. Um, legend. Yeah. Yeah. He's awesome. Um, yeah, he, he is so freaking talented and, uh, uh, wonderful, uh, to work with. I have, uh, I love working with him and we actually didn't work together, uh, that much on that set. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, just the way, you know, in terms of the shooting schedule, we ended up not, uh, sure. doing a lot. Um, so it was more after. Uh, that ended up uh, uh, making good friends, and we ended up being on so many projects together like that. Uh -huh. I was like, "Oh my god!" And I, th I think we we met on Star Wars Squadrons, mm -hmm. where there was like um, Star Wars, dude. Yeah, I know it was one of the original things that got you, and you're in it, <laughs> and you say cool stuff like you run on droid parts. Yes, <laughs> dude. What is your life? <laughs> um, yeah, no, I really am fortunate, you know. Um, very very grateful thanks man um yeah so uh you know and we met on that and it was like oh my god and you know we knew that we, we had been on uh, days gone together but uh literally uh i don't think we'd met um wow. it wasn't until star wars uh was that mocap as well yes squadrons because uh, it's a yep, flight squadrons yeah yeah um there were there was uh a few days of uh cool. performance capture on that yeah um how fun awesome. yeah exactly uh yeah and star wars star wars star like wars. the star wars dude yeah you have to be a tie pilot exactly and shen how cool is that shen <laughs> what a cool name oh it was su and such a great character yeah such a great character yeah so when and all these things said motion capture video games that's that's your spot like of all the jobs you get that's the ones yep. you're the most excited about yes yeah by far by far I, you know, obviously I'm, I'm fortunate enough that I get these great roles, but you know, to me, it's just, it's acting and, yeah. but it's acting, you know, these amazing circumstances like star Wars or, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, days gone and just it, where it's just, you're, you're playing pretend at a very high level yeah, and, but you're playing pretend and you're having so much fun doing it. And, you know, I, I still like Marvel, like I gotta, I get a 
pretend to be like this and and i'm doing this for a living this is how i support myself you yeah know? it's uh you know one of the lucky few it's pretty magical and i'm glad yeah, yeah is there a common misconception that people have that you found about like performance capture i'm sometimes asked like what do you do um okay. <laughs> I, I, you know and i'm like i don't do a damn thing i, I, right. I there's one that is a loaded question. Yeah, there's there's <laughs> one casting director that I remember said one time, um, you know, it's motion capture, so you have to move a lot. And I'm like, <laughs> in my head, I'm like, no, right. no, I'm going to be normal. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna move just as much as I would in real life. How yeah. about that? That's that's what I'm gonna do. We need more noodle arms, Jim. Yeah, exactly. We're just you know unmotivated motion because it's motion yeah. capture. So I was like, right. no, we're not gonna. Do <laughs> um so i think you know maybe that might be a, a misconception about it um and in, instead it's like no just uh, be real uh yeah. you don't have to do anything yeah know? stillness um, is very powerful if yeah. used correctly exactly exactly as you know yeah. um yeah, yeah do you have any advice for anyone that's get, trying to get into the thing now because you've also done on camera work as well. So I'll, I'll differentiate them. Do you have advice for people doing on camera? Because uh, did I see your Batwoman episode? Yes, I did. <laughs> or motion capture. Um, I, you know, I, I didn't differentiate. Develop yourself. Be, yeah. be as good as you can be um, in, in acting, uh, in performing, so that when those opportunities come you can rise to the challenge that's it just work your freaking ass off yeah um yeah that 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 would be my advice and you know there's no difference between uh, motion capture and tv um you know i've got a, a crap ton of credits and on both sides but mm -hmm. um it, it, yeah i don't i literally do not differentiate i do the exact same thing i use my imagination um i took a bunch of classes i needed to Mm -hmm. I, sure. I, I was not a natural. Um, oh, he just passed, unfortunately. Ray Liotta um, yeah. was someone who inspired me greatly. I remember seeing him in um, Wild Things. Oh, yeah. He, he made this entrance. He was just like, Dude. oh, my God. He was uh, this incredibly intense uh, bad guy that just like, leapt off the page was so real that left off the screen was so real and you know was amazing and i was like already blown away by that but then not that long after he did another movie called dominic and eugene uh, where he played like a resident uh, uh in a hospital who had a, a younger brother um played by the guy who did uh, mozart tom hulse mm -hmm. um uh who uh had some developmental issues and he was a totally different character. He, here he was, a med student, uh, and taking care of his younger brother. And when you saw, I, I saw the, the, that full, vast spectrum of, of the types of characters he could play, I remember it's like, oh my God, I want to do that. Yeah. That's, that's always what's, what's uh, uh, drawn me, is to be able to play so many different types of, of people. And mm -hmm. um, having having that that incredible range, yeah, was something that inspired me so much so that I found out where he went for uh, uh, who his acting teacher was, and I studied with that guy Harry Smart Master man. George for four years. Yeah, um, dude. Yeah, and it, it that honestly was was game changing for me. I bet. Um, you know, teaching me. That we're, like, all the stuff we're talking about, you know, the, the stillness, not having to do anything mm -hmm. to allow allow things to happen rather than to force them or, you know, um, and just working at it. Work, 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 work. Um, and uh, that that definitely is. So coming back full circle <laughs> to your question <laughs> of there was a question. Do I, do I have anything to to advise to anyone getting into it? um is yeah work at it become the best actor you can be you know um well, yeah whatever whatever that means to you and in whatever ways work for you and yeah. different teachers different teachers are you know mm -hmm. good for some people not for others um so you know uh and, and i'm definitely of the 
Bruce Lee school in terms uh -huh. of grabbing some from this discipline, some from that discipline, some from this. It's like you have to find what works for you. Yep. Um, and there is no just one way. Yeah, uh, there's no least, right way. Yep, there's no right way. Look at that. Look, look at, at that. you, Jim. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so funny with my ADD. Like, I always go off. I'm ADD, too. Sometimes I come, come out. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's great? That's great for improvising, though. It is. <laughs> In the middle of the scene, you can go. I was like, oh. And then, but then coming back to the main thread, it's like, damn it, where were we? <laughs> yeah, that's really, there was a question? That yeah. Was so long Ex ago. <laughs> exactly. I know. It's like you, you, the guy who asked it doesn't even remember it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brian. Oh, God. That's what you're here for. We talked about this. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, dude, just like that, we've been talking for over an hour already. Uh, <laughs> it's been a sheer joy. Walt was absolutely wrong. <laughs> yeah, I, I told you. I told you. <laughs> but dude, before I release you into the wild, I got to ask, where can people find you online? Where can they find your stuff? Uh, you can you can find me uh, uh, Twitter and Instagram on Jim underscore Peary. Um, I've got some awesome projects coming up and I can't say a damn thing about them. <laughs> um, but when I do, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be happy to let you know. Um, yeah, th there you go. I love it. You are a joy. Uh, same here, Brian. It's been an absolute pleasure. And... Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at brianbalance.com. There you'll find my demos, films, and a bunch of other really fun stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to pick you up some sweet gear. Also, I've made a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly and get early releases of the shows, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Daryl, Daz, Ben, Victor, Jim, and Chris. Your support means so, so much to me, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.